Novena of Holy Christmas The Nine Excesses of Love By the Servant of God, Louisa Picaretta, The Little Daughter of the Divine Will Preparation for Holy Christmas During the Season of Advent The Nine Excesses of Love in the Incarnation of the Word Let us prepare ourselves for the great feast of Holy Christmas by meditating on the mystery of the Incarnation of the Word, attentively and continuously, during the season of Advent, with the Christmas Novena, the Nine Excesses of Love, which Louisa did for the first time at the age of seventeen, and which she never abandoned during the course of her life. Let us focus on each excess of love for one week, during nine consecutive weeks, by reading and meditating on them each day, ever more closely and deeply. This will help us to prepare ourselves for the final nine days before Christmas, in which we will repeat the Novena. May God grant us abundant graces, light, and consuming love, to be reborn with him in the life of the divine will. Amen. The Nine Excesses of Love by the Servant of God, Louisa Picaretta, Little Daughter of the Divine Will. Louisa says, With a novena of Holy Christmas, at the age of about seventeen, I prepared myself for the feast of Holy Christmas by practicing various acts of virtue and mortification, and especially by honoring the nine months which Jesus spent in the maternal womb with nine hours of meditation each day, always concerning the mystery of the Incarnation. Having completed the first excess of love, known as Trinitarian love, and the second excess of love, known as Constrained love, and the third excess of love, known as Devouring love, we now move on to the fourth excess of love, known as Operative love. To be prayed from November 4th through November 10th. Fiat. Fourth Excess of Love My daughter, from the devouring love, move on to look at my operative love. Each conceived soul brought me the burden of her sins, of her weakness and passions, and my love commanded me to take the burden of each one of them. And it conceived not only the souls, but the pains of each one, as well as the satisfaction which each one of them was to give to my celestial Father. So my passion was conceived together with me. Look well at me in the womb of my celestial Mama. Oh, how tortured was my little humanity! Look well at my little head, surrounded by a crown of thorns, which pressed tightly around my temples, made rivers of tears pour out from my eyes. Nor was I able to make a move to dry them. Oh, please, be moved to compassion for me. Dry my eyes from so much crying. You who have free arms to be able to do it. These thorns are the crown of the so many evil thoughts which crowd the human minds. Oh, how they prick me, more than thorns which sprout from the earth. But look again, what a long crucifixion of nine months. I could not move a finger or a hand or a foot I was always immobile. 
There was no room to be able to move even a tiny bit. What a long and hard crucifixion, with the addition that all evil works, assuming the form of nails, continuously pierced my hands and feet. So he continued to narrate to me pains upon pains, all the martyrdoms of his little humanity, such that if I wanted to tell them all, I would be too long. I abandoned myself to crying, and I heard in my interior, My daughter, I would like to hug you, but I am unable to do so. There is no room. I am immobile. I cannot do it. I would like to come to you, but I am unable to walk. For now, you hug me and you come to me. Then, when I come out of the maternal womb, I will come to you. But as I hugged him and squeezed him tightly to my heart with my imagination, an interior voice told me, Enough for now, my daughter. Move on to consider the fifth excess of my love. You have reached the end of the fourth excess of love. Fiat.